uh, to share his knowledge on vaping. Um, it has become a big issue, especially around the young uh, students here. Um, we know they're bringing them into school every day. We're doing our best to try and find them. Um, but for us, it's all about the safety and kids' health. And so I think you'll have some great information for us. Thanks, Chris. If I, if I could really uh, repeat that, too. Um, you know, and I know I'm the SRO, law enforcement presence. The, we're, there's zero interest at all in trying to get anyone in trouble. We're trying to get this word out and trying to deal with the health issue, okay? So rather than putting stats out, because any stats that we have right now <laughs> that I can get are all, all of a sudden out of date because it's just been, been exploded. Um, but there's a group called uh, Monitoring the Future, and they've been looking at teen drug use, like alcohol, cigarettes, snuff, anything that teens might be involved in. They've been looking at, at it for since 1975, and they're telling me they, they just posted that, and it's the biggest explosion of any chemical they've seen in their 44 years in terms of its growth. That includes alcohol, marijuana, uh, all the other things. So I mean, it, it's we're in a uh, we're in an epidemic. All right, and so this is what we're dealing with, okay? Now I've got some stuff I'm going to pass around. Please, I'm, I'm going to have you guys take it out, look at it. Um, if you can figure out how to fire it up, go ahead. Um, there's, um, but this is this is the predominant that we see in it in, with high school kids right now, and it's it's the jewel, okay? Um, the secondary thing that we're seeing also in the school are the, are the dad are the pens, and I have some of those, and I'll show you how those work, and I'll pass those out also. And thanks to uh, Mrs. Page, I got a nice new one um, <laughs> that for, for my demonstration today. At least I got the, the, um, what goes in it. Okay, so those are the two things um, for the folks that just got here that we're dealing with, Jewel and the vape pen, okay? So this, so you can just pass this around. Oh, and I forgot to mention too, if anybody's interested, there's, a, like a, there's some uh, index cards at the back. If you want to jot your name and your email address down, the folks at, um, there's a company called Bark, and what they do is they do social media monitoring for parents' phones or for kids' phones. Oh, thank you, thanks. So I told them about what I was doing. Um, I'm going to show you how we've, get, we've got some intel, and I'm going to sh repeat how we're not trying to get anyone in trouble, and I'll prove that. But I'll show you... Um, I explained what I was doing to them, and they said, well, please feel free to give uh, a year away to some parent if they want it. So if you're interested in entering the drawing, just put your name on the card, and at the end, I'll just um, I'll, uh, put your name and your email address, and I will go ahead and uh, I'll pick a winner. I was told by some other moms, like, don't pick the winner, because then the kids will know which kids has the on their phone, so we'll, we'll notify them uh, privately. So this is, this is the jewel, and if you notice, as it's getting passed around, okay, um, this is the main part of the device, and these little square things are the flavor pods, okay? That, that's what has the nicotine in them, all right? This is the way the kids charge them. So, I have here the docking station. So, I'll just pass it down. Yeah. So, this is what kids do. I'll pass, so, there's one over here. I'll start it over here. Um, it's like a magnet, and this goes into the side of the computer, okay, and then it sticks right on and it'll charge. So this was found today, this page, a teacher gave me this, I don't know if she talked to you, but, uh, so, she, but anyway, two kids were, were basically shaking hands on the way to the bathroom, and she stuck her hand out and they dropped this in her hand, so, so it cost them the cost of a charger anyway. Um, so this is what, this was goes into the side of your laptop, okay, and the vaping device, this is the, uh, these are the, the pod that the flavor is in. goes in the top. This gets charged in the computer and for whatever length until that lights up and then it's ready to go. Okay? So, start this one right here. I will tell you, too, if you hear your kids starting to complain a little bit about so-and-so won't let me go to the restroom, uh, we kind of ask teachers to say, can you wait five minutes? Because what we're finding is kids are planning, um, hey, let's meet in five. You know, so they'll wait, and it's amazing how when you sit at the corner of the hall, because if I see somebody coming to the bathroom who sometimes I know is maybe having things to catch them yet, 
um, I'll wait, and all of a sudden, out comes so-and-so, and then out comes so-and-so. So they're all coordinating to meet in the bathroom. Um, so we've asked teachers, uh, you know, to try and limit if they can. I, I never want to tell a kid they can't go to the bathroom. Uh, but just to say, you know, unless it's an, an emergency, can you just wait five minutes and, and then you can go? Just to maybe stagger it so they're not able to connect when they want to in the restrooms. Okay. These are the pens that kids are using, and this is just one. I got a bunch more I'll pass around, including the juice that goes in it. The top of the pen is obviously goes in a mouth. Uh, there's a tank that, that they take, that they unscrew, they put the um, they put the uh, the cartridges in with the oil or the or the juice that they call it. And then there's a battery, just like a phone battery or a small uh, AAA battery. When you hold that button down, this one is dead, thank goodness, but when you hold that button down, it activates the battery and it'll start to heat up and it takes that uh, liquid and turns it into a vapor. And that's what you need to get it um, to get it through your, to get it up into your system. So there's just a few different ones to take a look at and I've had my hands all over that. I don't know whose mouth it was in, but <laughs> I just realized. It'll be all right. I always wash my hands. I'll wash up good afterwards. Um, so just so you know, there's a law that they can't get. They're not supposed to be able to get vapes till they're 21. I won't go through the, the, the verbiage of it, but it's 21. But the problem is there's really not much of a fine to it, okay? Um, even, if they, even if someone's selling them vapes, it's, it's, what, it's like a $100 fine. I um, mean, it's not really that punishable. So um, the law, and we don't enforce that law. We don't enforce that law in the at the high school. Right. So we, we we as a SRO, my job is to make the kids healthy, keep them safe. I'm not. We're not charging them with anything. Okay. So we find kids. We're not trying to get them jammed up. We're just trying to get them uh, help. Kenny, can I touch sure. you one second? I will tell you. We we know for a fact that kids are selling vapes here at school. Um, all we ask is. You know, and you can do it through the tip hotline. Uh, let us know who you are hearing. So we do know of certain names, and we really try to catch them. It's very difficult, but for us, knowledge is power. So um, it just for us, it, it lets us kind of keep an eye out uh, to see. Because again, it's not about punishment; it's about safety. We want these kids safe in school. And if they're vaping in school, um, and we had a marijuana vape um, just last week, uh, it's not safe. Not, and if they're doing that in school, th there's a problem. So that little cartridge that I'm passing around, that little, that little, well, that's the pen, but the little square cartridges that I have, each one of those cartridges contains basically the amount of nicotine in a pack of cigarettes. Okay? So if you can see the size of that device, in order to get that much nicotine, if you had to smoke, I mean, I'm old and never hit, but like people used to smoke, uh, you, had to, you had to draw 20 bucks to get the same amount of nicotine that's in that little square, okay? So um, it would be hard to do, even for a, a, a smoker, okay? But we, we, we're pretty sure, and Deb will speak to this in a little bit, we're pretty sure that kids are, you know, they're, they're possibly knocking back one of these pods on the way to school. So they're smoking what could be the equivalent of... 20 cigarettes worth of nicotine in a short period of time, okay? Um, so, so the nicotine thing, without doing a quick, but I'll do a quick health class, all right? And I apologize for the, the visual, but there's two axes here. One is how dependent a chemical is, and the other one is how harmful it is. So just so that you understand, like, dependence and harm, heroin is out here, okay? So we all know about heroin. But if you look at where nicotine is, Nicotine is way up high on the dependency scale. It's not really that much of a harm, per se, although I'll make the case when you get involved with the teenage brain developing, it's a problem. But straight nicotine for like a normal adult doesn't cause as much harm, but it's incredibly addictive, okay? Incredibly addictive. And this is why we think we're finding so much vaping in schools. And it's not just our school, by the way. I met today uh, juvenile justice... Um, Group, East Bridgewater, Bridgewater, Whitman Hanson, myself, and it's everywhere. In fact, I got some of that stuff from Whitman Hanson. So um, it's, it's everywhere. And the, the key is, is the dopamine. And as we, without the science again, the kids' brains are filled with dopamine. That's why, you know, that's why they call, I used to call my kids dopes. They're, it's dopamine. And, and addictive drugs, the way they work, 
is they work one of two ways. They either stimulate dopamine, like heroin or nicotine, or they enhance the effect of it, like cocaine. So if you, think, if you can think about the way you've heard about how heroin works and how people become addicted and sick, and then you think about what you hear like from movies and stuff, people that use cocaine, they get like a rush out of it. It affects them two ways. But nicotine is a link to that dopamine. And that's, that's really the health issue. So for any of you that may have been a smoker, I fortunately wasn't, but my generation did, um, typically you inhale a cigarette, it releases that dopamine, and in a kid's head, we can only imagine what kind of dopamine release they get with nicotine, okay? So I put inhale new nicotine, so it doesn't have to be a cigarette, it could be the vape. And very soon after that, you get this falling nicotine level, and your brain creates another crave. And the only way that you can get back to that is to inhale some more nicotine. So for, for like folks that you might know that are heavy smokers that start smoking in the morning, and they smoke all day, that's why, Okay? And that's what we're starting to see, and I'll ask Ms. Seidel to address this in a little bit. That's what we're starting to see in kids, like just the way they feel in school. We're seeing sort of the sicknesses and some of the, um, some of the symptoms, okay? Um, I just, I'll list them up there, but can you tell us, Ms. Seidel, what you see? So one of the things that I was seeing towards close to the beginning of the year was um, a couple of kids here and there. So what will happen is a kid will be coming to school, and they know they're not going to be able to to vape for a while, or they might not get a chance to go to the bathroom. So they'll come in, and they'll they'll just take as many hits as they can off of a jewel or off of a dab pen, and then they come in, and they suddenly are super nauseous. They turn white as a sheet. They're dizzy. They come to see me. I need to lie down. Okay, so I'm getting ready to call a parent, and then miraculously, within 15, 20 minutes, they're okay again. So that is, a, that is a clear sign of nicotine overdose. So then what I've been doing is talking to the kids and saying, hey, <laughs> you know, it's not, I'm not, I'm not the disciplinarian here. Is this what's going on? And I've only had probably two out of a lot of kids admit it to me um, that they're doing this. So that's really concerning. So I, I'm not sure if, I don't know if I have talked to any individual parents um, a lot of kids have come down for Tums a lot. Um, Tums and Tylenol for like minor headaches. So parents have to sign a consent for the Tylenol or I've gotten verbal consent for some people for Tylenol. But sometimes you, you kind of look at it and say, hmm, you've got a lot of Tylenol going. So that's a sign of nicotine withdrawal too. Then you've got the restlessness, you know, the behaviors, the inability to sit still in class, which now not every kid that comes down for Tylenol or Tums do I think is vaping. But to give you a clear picture, I don't know if I was talking to one of the gym teachers who teaches a health class, and he said to his class, it was an eighth grade class, and there were 24 kids in it. And he said, you know, I'm going to leave the room. I want you guys to tell. And, oh, you're going to get in, us in trouble. No, I'm not going to see it. He left the room. Out of 24 kids, the amount of kids that admitted to vaping every single day, at least once a day, was 20. So... This is this is a very concerning. Thing. And, and yeah. you know, there's there's probably some like nobody wants to be one of the sure. kids either. However, um, but but there's also I remember Miss Idel came out like early in the year when I first started to get to know her, and she's like, I'm running out of tums, and I'm like, who? What teenagers take tums? I mean, that's what people my age take. So yeah, there are but clearly. And so, and the nicotine piece and the dopamine with the teen brain. You know, I use the same discussion when I talk to kids when we talk about um, marijuana or alcohol or any of the drugs. I know you guys probably beat it into their heads, but you know, you're still growing, your brain is developing. Yeah, yeah, we know. But that's the issue. You're still growing, your brain is developing, and uh, the teen brain is under construction. So the, the, you're setting patterns. When you're setting addictive patterns, even if they decide to quit vaping and nicotine, the, the, the synapses are already set to be more likely to be addicted to alcohol or other drugs later because they, be, they get that sort of addictive personality. So it, it's a concern from that standpoint, okay? Um, and the problem with educating the kids is like if you try to let them go about the ways that they find things out and they go on YouTube or Google, they're gonna, a lot of the stuff that's out there is telling them that it's healthy, you know? Like YouTube and Google are not like, you know, you can... You know, if you if you if you said to your son or daughter, hey, you know, there's a big, you know, heroin can be very dangerous. 
Google it and you, they Google heroin overdose, it would, they'd get a plenty of uh, information. If you Google teen vaping or is vaping healthy or, you know, you'll get site after site of all the cool things you can do vaping. So it, we're fighting sort of that battle too, information wise, right? You're going to hear the big thing that we hear kids saying and that the way that these vape companies are selling it is that it's just water vapor, okay? So it's not smoke. Um, it's basically just water vapor um, because it's called vaping. It's really not. It's what, what it is is it's, a, um, it's an aerosol, and it creates it's little uh, tiny particles that get into your lung, okay? Makes it harmful. I mean, there's, there's something called popcorn lung... Mrs. Page and I spoke earlier. You said you had heard about a case of it over in East Bridgewater. I get together once a month with various um, assistant principals, and I can't remember the school, but uh, they already have a student who has been diagnosed with the popcorn lung. Uh, so this is a high school student already diagnosed. So this one might manifest itself in like some bronchial issues too. You might not go be as serious. But the, the, the one that I tell the kids about, and I'll go through it quickly with you, I try to be a little bit more scary with them. But as a young 18-year-old restaurant hostess, she'd been vaping only for a couple of weeks. This was in Pennsylvania. This was from within the last year. Went to the emergency room. She experienced, uh, experienced what they call uh, respiratory failure. According to her doctor, she was unable to get enough oxygen in her blood from her lungs and required a ventilator to be put in. Okay? Um, and then what I explained to the kids is, without the scientific part, is they had to, you basically create, your body fights the, the particulates in there, so it creates a lot of phlegm, or I use a different word with the kids, and it filled you almost drowned in your own lungs. So this particular young lady had to have tubes placed inside her lungs so that they would, so that they would uh, drain. Okay, so those are some of the, uh, and, and it's not long-term effects. That's the other thing. Smoking was an easy thing to talk to kids about. Like I started there like almost 20 years ago or 19 years ago, and kids used to smoke. And thank goodness, whatever, you guys did a good job. And the kids aren't smoking anymore, right? Have you, when was the last time? Right? Kids don't smoke. So, um, but they would always say, well, my grandfather smoked, my grandmother's. Long-term smoking, you could always make the case to the kids, hey, that eventually it's going to make you sick. This appears to be a little bit more sudden in some cases, okay? So I try to get that across to them. That you know you could experience even a healthy person could experience um, uh, some issues even early on in, in the use of it, right? So <clears throat> I went on a uh, I wanted to I wanted to see about because I wanted to move this from nicotine into marijuana, and I kind of wanted to see what was out there. So I did a little research and I found this particular piece, and what this is, um, they did a study. This group, uh, Madison Dapsovich, whatever, she works for IFL Science. And they try to compare what it was like for people that smoked marijuana the conventional way and then vaped, and which was worse and which was harder and which worked better. So they, they, they actually did an experiment. I'm sure they had a tough time getting volunteers, right? So, um, but over six, eight and a half hour sessions, participants either smoked or vaped marijuana containing zero, so they had a test group. 10 milligrams or 25 milligrams of THC. That is the, that's the chemical that gets you high when you smoke. But they weren't aware of what, which one they were using. So, and again, this is a small group, so this is anecdotal. Um, inhaling 25 megs of THC will get you, according to this study, absolutely loaded no matter how you take it in. Two of the participants vomited, others hallucinated. Over the course of the study, both smokers and inhalers all got the symptoms that they said any 16-year-old school kid would know Increased heart rate, cotton mouth, bloodshot eyes, paranoia, uh, which peaked in the first hour and then wore off after eight. Okay, so they both got stoned, they both felt it the same way. However, overall, vaping proved a much more potent at every dose, with researchers reporting significantly higher concentrations in their blood and also seeing more cognitive mistakes, and uh, they reported feeling higher. So, again, small study. But I've, I've felt all along, and I've been told by law enforcement people that the vape, the vaping device is like the prime vessel for marijuana. You know, it's like not the old, it's not like dragging smoke through, through a pipe or through uh, paper. Now you're vaporizing it and you're putting it directly in your lungs, okay? So how much is this a problem? Oh, and here's the problem, actually, and covertly anywhere. 
So it really is covert. Like, like for example, I have no doubt that any one of the folks in the back room right now could be could vape a little, and we wouldn't necessarily know. Because the way the kids and and what they do is they go. There's a ton of websites. I just did a YouTube search one day, and I got all these things. I got caught vaping at school. How to not get caught vaping at school? How to vape indoors without getting caught? But kids know how to do it. They can hold it in their hand. If if anybody has that, um, the jewel. You can just hold it in your hand, you bring it up to your mouth, you take an inhale, and they blow it back down another sleeve if they're wearing a coat. Um, so it's really hard to detect. There is a smell, and I've smelled it before, and it smells like kind of nice, like vanilla or yeah, fruit. It's not like a cough smell. It's like, hmm, you know? I will say um, the THC vape, mm -hmm. and I must have walked in right in the moment, it did smell like marijuana. Um, I don't know how long that smell would last, uh, but you could smell it. Yeah, it will, but not long. Yeah, uh, Miss Page. Not was, like years ago. She was in. Yeah, yeah right. right. So if somebody at the old high school <laughs> was smoking yeah. a joint in the bathroom, it would be there for like the whole day. But this is comes and goes very quickly. Okay. So and the kids know how to do it. And they they work on each other. Um, you know, to sort of head off like a question that's probably in your mind, like what can we do? The schools do. We're doing a lot. Um, but when it's that covert, it's really hard. Because you can't really blame somebody because they smell like vanilla. You know what I mean? Or they smell like mango. Um, and literally, when, they, when you walk in the bathroom door, it's as quick as just in the pocket. And even if it goes in the pocket, um, the kids are pretty smart. They'll go, they go into a separate pair of shorts because they know we're not going to look. And we're not going to look. I mean, it's, I'm not going to look. Um, so, you know, it's very covert. It's very difficult. All right. So now the law regarding marijuana, just to touch on, knowingly or intentionally supplying or giving or providing marijuana to anyone under the uh, 21 years of age, um, it's a civil penalty of not more than 200 or imprisonment for not more than a year. I can tell you nobody's going to jail for giving marijuana to kids. Although I did see a case in Taunton just recently at a store where they, where they went in and they were selling like weed to the kids, and they did get arrested. Yeah, it was on the news. Yeah, it was on the news. I'm wondering what's actually going to happen, because marijuana is like technically legal for everybody over 21. Yeah. So I don't know. But I'm saying, like, we don't, as parents, me being a parent also, but as parents, um, we can't really fall back on the law. Like, we can't say, well, you know, you're going to get in a lot of trouble if you do this, because the law is not really supporting us on this. So, um, And there are some social host ramifications, too, which are interesting. Just like, just like um, alcohol... If, some, if, a, if somebody, probably not someone who's here, obviously, but somebody who doesn't care as much maybe has a party and they're allowing kids to smoke, they can be held responsible social hosts just like the alcohol one. So um, there are social host ramifications. So the scary thing is, if does somebody have, anyone have one of those jewelry things around that's still being passed? So the, the little... Um, yeah, thanks. Right, so this little, these little jewel pods, right? So up until like, I don't know, a few months ago, the jewel company made these, and then th this was nicotine, and it was flavored, and it went into that thing that I passed around. If anyone didn't get it, I will, you can pass, you know, keep them out there. And then we, find, we come to find out that you can actually purchase these online, and this is the THC. So this is the, so now they have the marijuana version that will work inside the jewel. Okay, I just went online and, and you can buy these. You can uh, Indica, Bloom uh, Bloom Farms is the name of the company, and they are the pod that goes into the jewel. Okay, so now it's available, and like I said, that's why it's it's the vessel that people are going to use to to get to get high. Okay, um, and I want you to think about this. If you remember that study I showed you, where it said 25 milligrams of THC will get you absolutely loaded. And I talked about the, the kids being able to smoke the equivalent of a pack of cigarettes in one of these pods. Well, these pods are 500 milligrams of THC. 500 milligrams of THC. 25, according to my, my, the study, <laughs> is enough to get you wasted. And yet, these pods are coming, this size, are coming in 500 milligrams. That's a lot of THC. Okay. So like we used to say, I know it's, um, it's a page of me, it's not your, your daddy's marijuana. It's a totally different thing. It's not like the 
Cheech and Chong movies or whatever you saw when you were a kid. It's a whole different strain. All right? And you can purchase it online. All right? Now, I'm going to talk about... So you're saying, oh, okay, well, I can get it online, but my kid's not going to be able to buy it online. We kind of thought that too, but we'll, I'll show you in a, in, a little, in a few minutes how that, how that occurs. Okay? So <clears throat> to prove to you that we're not looking to get anyone in trouble... Um, when kids use their, their school device, their school Chromebook that the school gave them, they agree that anything that they you say on that is knowledge, okay? So these are just some recent text exchanges. When I say text, it was conversations exchanged on Chromebooks back and forth. Uh, Google Hangouts. Google Hangouts, and there's other ways too, but um, Google Hangouts, and I'm not identifying, obviously, the students, we, we know who they are, we haven't, we're not approaching them, because we're not trying to get anyone in trouble after the fact, I just think it's interesting intel, so this was uh, January 28th of this year at 11.15, school is in session, school's in session, <coughs> so student number one, um, something, student number two, I was joking, calm down, Student number two says, I'm still a little high, though, laughing my ass off. Student one says, same. I didn't know there was THC in that vape pen. So this is during, you know, this is during a school day, right? 11, 28, I mean, 1, 28, 19, 11, 15. Okay? This was 2, 15, again, a school day, 10, 18 in the morning. Student number three, it's different than the other two. Oh, my God, Dead. Uh, student four, from what I can tell is, is defending their driving, laughing my ass off, I'm a good driver. Student three, I, I edited this, <laughs> um, are you effed up? Student four, I mean, I was using my dad pen all this morning, emojis, like high emojis, but I'm fine. So again, this is possibly somebody that had drove, driven into school or possibly... Uh, senior, I don't know. We don't. We don't really care. I'm not really. We're not going to like track these people down to get them in trouble. We're worried about their health and their safety more than that. Um, and then again, 2:15. I think that was 2:15 too. Later in the day, um, you know, student number five again, a totally different pair of students. You know what a dad pen is, all right? Student six says, yeah, it's a weed vape. And then student six says, laughing my ass off. And student five reminds him it doesn't smell. So they clearly understand that using the vape pen, like the ones I passed around, um, that, the t that it's, it's hard to determine uh, a smell from them, okay? So it's definitely going on here, um, and it's definitely this weed involved, okay, or, or THC. And this is, what, this is what it looks like, and this is what <laughs> this is, uh, Paige was able to... So this was this came just was a week and a half ago. So this is the def, this is the um, the refill. And if you look here, it's got a mouthpiece on it, and it would screw into one of those. And I'll pass this around. I need this one back though. It's got a lot of teaching, um, but I can't search anyone. So, um, but it, it's uh, it's got the THC in it, and it goes into the top of the pen, like so. Okay. And this one contains a thousand milligrams of THC. <clears throat> All right. And interesting. I mean, sorry, Penny. That's in school, and these kids are smoking yeah, this thank in you. school. I mean, it's, it's I don't mean to lie to you. If I did, I'm sorry. I'm trying to. It's a thousand. So, um, so yeah. So if you can pass that around, uh, thank you. I will tell you um, when we do. If, if we do, we don't ever want to, but uh, we do offer for students who are um, in violation of the chemical health policy while in school. Uh, we partner with uh, Independence Academy, which is a recovery high school over in Brockton. Um, and we work with kids to lessen a suspension if they'll attend the program. They have um, a day program, 10 to 2, Monday through Friday. They can start any day. Um, and for us, we hope they'll go to A, it'll lessen their suspension, but uh, more importantly, it'll educate them. It's a great program. Um, they can speak with counselors. Uh, we have had kids go and they've had good experiences, and I think it's really helped them. Um, but if they get to a point where they're, you know, smoking weed in school, um, they need some help. It's just, it's not, it's not healthy. 
if you see anything mango, this is another interesting thing that I just kind of stumbled on, really, because I talked to enough people that use If you see anything mango, mango has this weird uh, attachment to, to marijuana, and it relates, if you, if you Google the two, apparently people that smoke a lot of marijuana claim that eating mango enhances the high, okay? But it's morphed into like most, like the stuff we always find, and that one, in fact, that's out there, it's mango. So I think the kids think it's mango and it's more, I don't think that's the, the chemical piece, that's just a flavoring. But man, so if you see something like a mango air fl a freshener, right, you might want to ask, like, why mango? Because it's just kind of weird that it seems to permeate. Um, and, you know, of course, just to bring us back down to earth a little bit, you know, that, that, that horrible crash that happened this year um, on 106 right next door. Um, I was I was out with friends, um, and the woman's husband was a captain, fire captain in um, Whitman. He texted her. He said, "I'm, I'm we're, just, we're in a terrible accident," and it was either Mark or, Chris, Mark or Christine. Somebody texted. I hope these aren't our kids, because we heard four kids died, and we're like, you know, we it would be too much to handle for a, for a school system to have four kids. So after the fact, and this kind of came out after, they didn't really follow up too hard, but they found a lot of evidence of marijuana, of the vaping uh, type of marijuana and the liquids and stuff on the scene. And so, you know, like, and the kid that was driving survived, but he was hurt pretty bad. So I don't think there's any, there was any need to immediately start pointing blame or anything. But now after the fact, it, he was charged um, under the influence of marijuana, so it is it is a dangerous it is a dangerous drug. Okay, it, it, it it's a lot like alcohol. I just want to show you this. It takes thirty seconds. If, it, if I don't know if we have sound, can we check? Yeah. Oh, we do. Okay. Even in my own home, I had my own designated space to smoke. If I think about it, it really was like I was punishing myself. A friend of mine said, why wouldn't you just try the jewel? And so I went out and I bought one. The idea of going back to smoking, I couldn't even imagine doing that. I don't think anyone, including myself, thought that I could switch. So the reason I put that on is because you may be asking in the back of your head, like, why is this stuff legal? Like, why are they allowing these jewels? Well, it was initially sold. All of these eggs were initially marketed to help old guys like me quit smoking, basically. So um, that's what their ads are. But the kids have figured out the way around it. And Jewel is a little. Um, Jewel also has ads like this. They're not. They're on social media though. Not, you won't see them on TV. You know, like. Um, but this is the social media stuff they see. So they're getting a different view of Jewel than you guys might be getting. And I'm getting, because I see those ads on TV all, all the time, right? And to, to the extent of, you know, they make vape pens that are Hello Kitty. So, like, even sixth grade kids, when they talk about vaping, they're like, that's really, that's baby stuff. Like, yeah. So if they make a vape pen, so clearly the, the industry is aiming at our kids. Done a pretty decent job at, at, at getting them. Um, okay, so how are the kids getting it? Uh, I know I wouldn't throw stats at you, but this is national. So like three quarters of the kids get them from a physical retail location. I don't think that's happening anymore in Massachusetts. They're cracking down, okay? So it's not three quarters. 52% social source, okay? Somebody sold it to them in school or a buddy gave it to them. 6% on the internet. Doesn't sound like a lot, but interestingly enough, although the internet was not the most common way youth obtained the jewel, since only 6% reported it, nearly all the youth who tried to buy the product online were successful. Hmm. So 9 out of 10 were able to, to succeed. So we think what's going on is this thing called the Wish app. This is one way we think they're getting it, and this is going to change. We started to see a lot of traffic on this uh, site called Wish. It's a fashion site, so you can buy, like, so it would be, so the, 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 the the deal would be, I would say, hey, mom, uh, I can get great cheap clothing on this site. So would you, can you open up an account and I'll pick out the, you know, the clothes that I want and then we'll ship them and, and everybody's happy, right? Okay, so that works good. So what happens is they also sell vaping products and THC at this site. 
So you're like, okay, well, yeah, but I checked my, my account statement, and it's, you know, T-shirts and underwear and blah, blah, blah. Well, what we think was happening is the kids can go to, like, CVS and with cash buy a gift card, like a vanilla gift card. And then if you go into the app, because they have access to the app because they're shopping on it, you're paying the bills and you're checking the statements, so that's not an issue. But they go into the app, and then they, they order up the stuff, but then when it comes to method of payment, you can just change that. Because I know this because my son, my two sons who live in opposite parts of the country are glommed onto my prime Amazon <laughs> for the free shipping. So they, they pay their own bills and they get it shipped where they want. I don't have involved in it. So with, the gift, with that vanilla gift card, you, you buy what you need to buy. And then all you really got to do is come up with an alternate place. So you just find some kid whose parents either work all day or don't care, frankly, or don't, don't care to see a box come in. Maybe there's 30 other boxes coming in. So we think that's how they're getting it because the Wish app is popping up all over their social media a lot. So like once parents figure that out, there'll be another app that we won't know about. But it's just So if you're saying to yourself, well, I, you know, I don't know how my kid could have got this online, this is what we think is happening, okay? Um, just as we, as we close out, the other issue other than the marijuana is that really they're finding that kids, are, uh, after they vaping nicotine, they're going, back to vape, uh, they're going back to smoking cigarettes. And I don't know where the money trail is, and I don't know where the, the cigarette companies fall in this, but it's, it's likely if, kids, if we make it really hard for kids to get these nicotine vapes, they'll just start smoking again. So that's always a concern, right? They're finding that already, evidence of that. A um, couple of things to look out for. Um, sweet scents, okay? Uh, instead of nasty tobacco, you might begin to smell bubble gum. I, one time the eighth grade walked by and it was like chocolate. Like just, you know. If like teenage boy smells like mango. <laughs> but like the whole eighth grade went to like the beginning of the day. I'm like, hey, have a good day, kids. I'm like, ah. Oh. Like effervescent, <laughs> but clearly something. Um, you know, uh, skin, nicotine obviously ages the skin, so, you know, some of this stuff is a little more advanced. Nosebleeds. Mm -hmm. um, Seen an increase in nosebleeds. Um, also, the increased thirst, actually, a lot like going to get a drink. Seeing a lot of um, dry mouth, so kids asking for cough drops mm. who don't necessarily have a cough. So, you know, I'll ask the teacher, I ran out of cough drops <laughs> like, in the beginning of the year. So I started asking the teachers, is there a cough that's disrupting the class? The answer is no, then the kid's probably not going to get a cough drop. Um, but that, that is something that kids treat dry mouth with, is menthol cough drops. This was recommended, I don't necessarily agree with it, but they say the kids' caffeine intake may go down because nicotine makes them edgy. I think if they could find a way to be more edgy, they would, frankly. But uh, vaporous tongue is when the dry mouth loses some flavor. So you, they said you might notice kids putting extra salt, pepper, hot sauce on things that they normally wouldn't. As you know, anyone that, that unfortunately smokes or had smoked in the past, that's one of the things you lose right away is your, your flavor um, taste. Um, pneumonia, that's, that, that's the thing. So, you know, we haven't had cases of pneumonia, but like upper respiratory colds are all, um, they're common anyway with kids, but it's just something. If all these things have fallen into place. And then the big one was... Um, Finding unfamiliar computer-looking thingy things. So, like I like that this like the charger, right? So, like <laughs> I literally would have, and I, and it's embarrassing. But if I if my son dropped this, I'd be like, dude, you dropped it. Oh, what's on that? My term paper. Thanks, Dad. Like so, if you're finding stuff that you're not exactly sure what it is, you know, and did everyone get a chance if they didn't see that? Okay. So um, that's a that's a telltale because we we do hear that parents are finding like devices. Um, finding uh, battery charges or spare parts or anything like that. Because kids like to mess with those pipes, to, uh, with the uh, pens too. They like to tr try different things. So if you find spare parts around. And uh, that's all I really had. I, you know, we, 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 we come to you really asking, not, not for your help, but like just to make you aware of it and share it with, the, with folks in the community, other parents that may not be able to be here. I told... Um, both um, Mrs. Page and Mr. Bodwell, I'll be more, for anyone who couldn't come, we can do it, roll it again in a month or two. We'll probably have more information. I'll probably have more toys. Um, but, you know, I just really think it's important to get that information out so you guys can understand what we're dealing with and you can see it. And um, 
I know it's you're taking time out of your busy day, so thank you very much. I will. T if there's any questions, great. Some of you know me. You know that I'm very approachable. If you don't know me, ask somebody who does, and they'll tell you I'm very approachable. You can email me or call me at, at, at um, call me at, the, uh, at, at right in the SRO office downstairs. I'll be more than happy to shut the door and talk to you. So, you know, if there's something you don't want. Can I just add to? Sure. I know you're saying uh, for help. We are asking for help. Um, I'm sorry, we are. No, no, that's okay. Oh. <laughs> 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 Although you're right. But, and, and really, you know, I know as parents, you know what kids are vaping and so forth, and I don't know whether their parents know. I know kids tell me their parents are buying them vapes. Um, but what I, what we need, what we need here at school is help with parents in checking your children's bedrooms, check their drawers, check everywhere. Check their cars, because they are coming to school with vapes. Uh, we're not handing out vapes as they walk through the door. They are coming with them. So um, anything that you can do at home um, that can help us um, to, to not get them in the building uh, will be helpful. Because we do our best, but um, they're, they're great at hiding them. Um, so it's very difficult to try and find. But for, for us, it's about safety, it's about their health, and it's about those kids who aren't vaping who can't get into bathrooms yeah. because there's kids in there vaping. It, it, it kills me, it infuriates me, it frustrates me. Um, so those are the things, and that's what we've been trying to you know, make sure we're around and kicking them out of bathrooms. And Because mm -hmm. I do feel bad for those poor kids who really just want to go to the bathroom. And so many kids come to me and they say, Mrs. Page, I can't go to the bathroom. And, you know, and I feel very badly for them. And that's, you know, it's time. And I say to kids, I say, you know what? You guys need to stand up, too. You know, get a couple of you. I don't care and say, you know what, cut it out. If you want to do that, do it somewhere else. This is our bathroom. We need to be able to come into the bathroom and use it for what it's, the purpose is. Um, so we try to preach, and I know it's difficult, uh, but and I really talk to the seniors, too, um, to say, you know, empower yourselves, you know, and, and help, uh, help us by, you know, kind of policing each other. Um, because, you know, kids will listen to kids, sometimes more than they'll listen to us. And the fact is, too, I was going to touch on, but just briefly, um, the fact that kids are doing it so much in school at the risk of getting caught really speaks to the addiction piece because, like, you know, we know teens, we know teens drink, okay? They did when I was a kid. They did when my parents did. We don't find nips in the bathroom. So we don't think, the kids don't have, like, alcohol problems. But they, I think they do, some of these kids have a nicotine problem. And that's why they have to come in, as Miss Idell said, and then at nine o'clock it's like, whew, I'm gonna, I need some more. So I, I think and that we really. Just let you kids know they don't. You don't need to wait until somebody gets caught in the bathroom when they have a vape on them. They get in trouble if they, because I really do believe that a, a lot of the kids that are doing this, they want to stop, but they can't because now they are addicted. They can come to us to get help without being caught, and it's not going to be punitive if you come to us for help. You know, we don't have to catch catch it on you to, like, give you help. Like, that's, we can do that. There have been a couple of kids that have been able to quit here. So, mm -hmm. like, kind of that's empower good. them to do that. Well, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Go ahead. About the THC, buying that. Yeah. Is it because Massachusetts is legal, they can ship it to Massachusetts? I think so. I don't. Th I think that the the internet, when it comes to stuff like that, is like a great unknown. Like I don't. Th I, I think even if they could put a case together against one company, another it would be like whack a mole. Another one would pop up. Okay. So yeah, it, that's I'm sure part of it. And I know you can get. Um, Pretty soon, I haven't been into one here, and I really should, out of research, go into one of these shops and see what they sell. But I know, like in Denver and everything, they sell all the the oils that are ready to go for the vapes. So I'm sure they do around here, and I'm I'm sure we're teetering on once a, one a place opens around here and they start selling it in like Cumberland Farms or these other places, you'll see it a lot more frequent. Yeah. Also, too, like, like alcohol, you get a, you know you blow into a thing and it measures how much you have in your yeah. system. How are we measuring that? No, we can't. There's we can't. nothing. So that's interesting, huh? There's not. There's no way. I mean, a blood <coughs> test. <coughs> a blood test, but, but THC it's going to in your system for thirty days, so they might not actually be high when they take it. You know, test. I mean, there's some medical things that Deb's aware of, like test, temperature yeah. and stuff like that, and then okay. hair. You know, if you go to get a job, they'll check your hair because it's thirty days. But um, 
But yeah, like there's no like even roadside like drivers. We have nothing to yeah. do with people that are stone driving. You know, we can just go by what how they look. Didn't think about that when they voted it in, huh? Yeah, I know, but you know, it, it was coming anyway. So I mean, I think this was an unknown. But they they raised the age to 21 immediately. So it's not like they don't think it's a problem. It's just that maybe late. Okay. Thanks. Yes. Okay, so there's a couple things with that. So, I think so, but here's the problem. Um, and I know you're not going to be overly happy about this, but since they made marijuana legal, fewer and fewer dogs are being trained to sniff it out anymore. Okay? Like, my boss doesn't want to pay, you know, thousands of dollars for a drug dog that's going to sniff out legal stuff. So, so you're going to see the drug dog piece disappearing pretty quickly. I've asked Officer Flaherty if Taser would smell the THC. I don't know. I'll bring that in someday and we'll test it. I mean, the thing is that the kids keep it on them anyway. And we, we've never done a drug, drug test. We've never done dogs. We've done them before. Always very safe. The kids sit in the room. They go to class. And the dogs do the lockers. And we haven't got any further than that. No, there'd be no reason. It would be like having a cigarette sniffing dog, which you could, you a dog will sniff it. You can train a dog to sniff anything. But now it's a question: of Do we need to? You know, because the courts have said marijuana is not the smell of marijuana is not a, a, a indicator of crime anymore. So, so they don't. So jobs aren't doing that. They're getting into other areas. That's a good question, though. Yes. Is that anything that's come out about any kind of secondhand vape? No, the I've second hand smoke. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it, but I don't. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen anything like that's it's so new. This stuff. Yeah. You know, so until people start, until people start um, getting sick more of this, then they may look at why is this person sick. But yeah, I would assume I, I you know. It's in the air. So. I thought they were coming up with some sort of device that goes in the bathroom. Yeah, we, we we've looked at that and talked about yeah, it. We're not we're not saying it. it's out of the question. I think it's out of the question it's, now. Well, yeah, it's expensive. Yeah, it's extremely yeah. expensive, and um, some of the schools are using it already. Um, any change in the air, it goes off. I think so in aerosol, yeah. So yeah. Um, they're not finding real benefits. The schools that I have talked to that are using it, um, it's really hard too. If you can picture, so without. Telling tales out of school, I come in the other day and Mrs. Page's got some kids with their hands up in the air. She's like, she's like, don't, don't let them touch themselves, okay? Because I don't think I said that. <laughs> you said don't let them. I know. So they, and I didn't even know why. She had them like this, and so I said, all right, guys, get into the room. And they sat there. I had them put their hands down on the table. So the, the point was that they could have easily hidden something well, very that's quickly. that's the day that we were able to find, too. Right. Because they're so quick. They'll just be like this, put it down, and... So to your point, if that alarm goes off, and like even with a, even if Mrs. Page or, or if I, they wouldn't want me to do it, but if a school administrator had that alert on their phone, and they turn the corner of the bathroom, and there's like eight kids in one vape, now the vape's gone. Now whose is it? I mean, a lot of kids, Mrs. Page is good... She'll break them down, but I mean, there's no. You may not be able to find out who it is. I mean, the device does work to some extent. If the prices came way down, but it's it's yeah, like it's it's a cost thing. Find a way to, yeah. To go, you know, get around that also. Right. What about having this talk with them as well? Uh, I, I do. Yeah. Every single eighth grade kid, every single sixth grade kid in Dare. This is the first time in Dare I'll ever do. Uh, I'm repeating a lesson. I did vaping earlier in the year. And I'm going to do it again on the way out because I think it's that important. I never repeated. So, um, and all the eighth grade through phys ed. And then the ninth grade. And the ninth grade, we, we did. We, we talked and about health, it. Health and it's almost like there's a lot of, no, I, they get it, but there's a, it's a, it's a, it's. <laughs> I, will, I will say kids are frustrated by it because they will come and say, and they'll tell me names, so and so is smoking, mm -hmm. but I'll never pit kids against each other, so I'm not going to come down and say, Johnny told me he saw mm -hmm. you smoking, so I know you did, you can't deny it. But what we'll do is search that student and say, you know, I know he was, you know, smoking in there, but if I can't find anything, I'm, I've never <coughs> pit two kids against each other, but kids will come and tell us, hey, go down to that bathroom, they're all smoking, you know? Yeah. Just, no, sir. I, I mean, no, it's okay. Um, there's, yeah, I think the other problem we're facing, though, is there. there's no repercussion. There's no penalty. Mm. And I'm not 
an advocate for just penalty, but you know, if, if you're driving, why is it that you're not doing 60 miles an hour in a 25 zone? Right. Well, no, it's not good to but in addition to that, if you get pulled over, you have big problems. Right. So there, there's that cause and effect, which sounds like it's missing right now. Yeah. And there there is a penalty. There's a, a heaping school penalty. They, she has a lot right. more teeth than I do. Yeah. Right. Um, it, it, she does. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, and that's by law. That's by statute. Right. The SRO has been given a uh, mission, the SRO job, where we're not allowed to, we don't charge anybody with right. anything. So, um, so she, she has a lot of teeth. It's just it's really hard to pick up. You know, like, to yeah. your point, like a lot of people could be on the highway going over 55 because everybody's doing it, and it's it's hard to pick out that one. Right, and I guess just you know, picking back to the presentation, as, yeah. as conversations with students are happening, um, it, it's, as a parent, it's good to know, because I've actually even said to my kids, hey, you know, 21, you know what happens if you're 20, you have alcohol. Mm. You know, yeah. same alcohol is worse. It's but, worse than alcohol. Same problem for you if you get caught with that. So yeah. I guess it's just that cause-effect thing, and, and any help from... from this program yeah. being forced out of it. Yeah. Oh, they, they, they do. Right. They understand it. But I'm coming from it from like a health thing, you know. And, it, and But yeah, you're right. If it, yeah. We need teeth as well, I guess. Yeah. My, my yeah. So at what point would you notify a parent? And you say you Always. So it's like, for instance, those students that you said you had corn in the those parents are notified? Yep. Could you give a rumor that one Um. I'd be on the phone all day long if I heard. Um, you know what I mean? But if I um, if I if I if I search a kid, I'm, I'll pretty much be calling home. By, definitely, if I find something, we're calling home because uh, there'll be consequences. Um, with those students, because I knew there was marijuana involved, um, I called home. You know, and said they got lucky. I know they were smoking. I I couldn't find it on them. You know, I know they were smoking. They and I tell the kids, I said. You got lucky today, you know. Um, I, I try, I try to be as trans, transparent as we can because I think it hugely um, benefits to communicating with parents. Um, so nine times out of ten, the parents will get a phone call um, if their child has been searched. Um, if it's a day when there's quite a few and it's maybe some of the same kids, no, not all those parents. And like, and I said to prove like. You know, we know the students basically make those comments. A lot of that could have been bravado too. You know what I mean? So I would never hold anyone accountable. A court never could, but I would never hold anyone accountable for that. So that was more of a way to just get it out there that it's happening during school hours, and that's what. And I'm a parent too. I want to yeah, know. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I'd rather know. So. Um, okay. What's the extension to the school buses? Now. <laughs> I don't know. That's where I smoked when I was in high school. So, I mean, yeah. you know, it's, you got, it's impossible. I mean, I don't know how you're going to catch anybody smoking. We have, actually. Have you? Uh, yeah. I mean, I was at my new time in the world, but I had an incident mm -hmm. on the bus. Yeah. And I, we couldn't figure out who it was, but I got sick. Really? So where I was going to drive myself to the ER in the bus because wow. it started with that fruity smell, mm -hmm. and then it turned rancid. And it smelled up the whole bus. Luckily, I mean, I only had the kids on the bus for 25 minutes. Yeah. None of them said, and it was full. None of them said anything. And the windows were up. But my throat started closing up because mm. I'm having a hard time breathing. I believe but that. Yeah, if, 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 if I we have cameras, we couldn't figure it out. If we yeah. have them right. and we have, uh, they lose. Because the, riding a bus is a privilege. Mm -hmm. It's not a right. They have a right legally to be educated. The bus is a privilege, so we just, they don't ride the bus. Technically, it's school property. Yeah, school it probably says it's an yeah, it's an extension. Yeah, it's just like if they they're at the prom and they're vaping. Mm -hmm. Even if the prom's in town, there's still it's still school. It's a school event. All those rules uh, <coughs> fall under that. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, folks. Did everybody? If anybody who wants to fill out a card, um, the come up and take a look. And then anyone who wants to fill one of those out. Um, and I'll just, uh, at a later, quieter date, I will call the winner and tell them they have that software. But it's it's social media monitoring software that you can put on your kid's phone if you choose to. And if you win and you don't want it, give it to someone else. Just let me know because i got to tell the company who, who's getting it. So thank you very much, folks. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.